All right, everybody, this is a problem that involves Newton's second law equations and the torque equation to be able to solve for a system which is accelerating um, and rotating a pulley of significant mass. It's a little bit different than problems where we could ignore the mass of the pulley before because the tensions in the problems are going to be unequal. So what we can see is that this 44 kilogram crate is going to accelerate downward as the uh, 11 kilogram crate accelerates upward and it's going to rotate this disc clockwise giving it a negative angular acceleration. So what we're going to do is start the problem as we always would. We'll start with an FBD on each object, okay? Labeling what we know, 11 kilograms accelerating at plus one half g, 44 kilograms accelerating at negative one half g. That's given in the problem, one half the acceleration due to gravity, it's the acceleration. And the, the goal is to find the mass of this pulley, okay? Now, if we want the mass of the pulley, notice that since it's at linear rest, the mass would drop out if we set everything equal to zero. So we're going to want to use the torque equation here for, the, for um, solving our problem if we want to know the mass of the pulley. So let's see where these equations lead us. First thing we'll do is the easiest ones. Let's go ahead and write our Newton's second law equation. So we would have just T1 minus M1G equals M1A and T2 minus M2G equals M2A2. Uh, no surprise there, we've done that kind of a thing before. So the new idea is our torque equation. Notice that the only forces here providing a torque about the center is the tensions, all right? Because the normal force and the gravity pass through the uh, origin, the torque due to those two are going to be zero. So our net torque equation due to the, each, of the, each of the tensions is given right here. Uh, this torque is counterclockwise, so it's positive. This torque is clockwise, so it's negative, and we set that equal to the moment of inertia of the disk times the angular acceleration, T equals I alpha. That's kind of like our Newton's second law equation for rotation, right? So knowing that the moment of inertia of a disk, if you look it up in the table, is one-half mass of the disk R squared, we can substitute that in, and we see the sum of our torques now equals this. We're going to work with this a little bit more because we want to be able to relate this equation back to our second law equations, which involves the expression for the acceleration, which we know is the one-half g. So given the fact that tangential acceleration, right, will be equal to these accelerations, okay, in terms of its magnitude, and we know that tangential acceleration can be expressed as r times alpha, we're going to substitute tangential acceleration in to our equation yielding this and we can see we get one more simplification then. R cancels out from all of the terms in this equation yielding this. Look at that, it's looking simpler all the time once we cancel R. So now we can, ex we can solve for the mass of the disk which is what we're looking for and we end up with this expression right here which looks pretty simple. So now all we need to do is use our second law equations to solve for expressions T1 and T2 and we should be good to go. So let's go back up and do that. All right, so take a look at these two equations. This is what we had up above. And we're going to substitute the value for acceleration that we've been given, plus one-half g for a1, minus one-half g for a2. And when we solve for t1 right here and solve for t2 here, and substitute those two values in, okay, that leads finally to an expression for T1 of 3 halves M1G and for T2 of 1 half M2G. All right, I'm going to express that just in decimal form. Now we can substitute those values back into our torque equation, okay? So, um, the one other thing that we need to think about for our torque equation is since that alpha is negative, since we have a clockwise rotating disk, what we're going to put in for that value for the tangential acceleration, our alpha, is going to be minus one-half g. Okay? All right. So coming back to our torque equation and solving for the mass of the disk, substituting the values that we just had for T1, and T2, right here and right here. 
Here's the numerical values. Here's our one and a half mg minus our half mg. Remember, we had 11 kilogram and 44 kilogram masses over the minus one half g that we have for our tangential acceleration yields a numerical value of 22 kilograms for the mass of the disk, which seems pretty reasonable.